Well, howdy, my friends out there in viewership land. Welcome back to Nash's Apartment. We're going to be jumping once again into the Summer Smackdown today. We're going to be doing Shut Your Mouth in a very famous match with Jeff Hardy and The Undertaker for the undisputed title. Happened on a Monday Night Raw. Yeah, I wanted to do this ladder match because we've been talking about Jeff Hardy a lot lately. And I thought about, well, we're going to feature all, the, all Smackdown games. Why not feature that one in this particular Monday Night Raw? So this match to me is the ultimate definition of what it means to earn your spot, to put in the work, and then to get an opportunity. This was an organic match that just felt like this was the right time. Now I'm going to tell you as a fan, I didn't know if I wanted Jeff to win truly. I feel like I was definitely cheering for him. He was one of the people I watched growing up. I was definitely in that boat. I was starting to watch wrestling in 1999 again just after SummerSlam I was the perfect age you know, I was around 9 or 10 when I started watching and you know, the Hardy Boys were my heroes I was jumping off of stuff to emulate them just like everybody else and I love Jeff just like everybody else but the thing is obviously things afterwards in his career you know took a weird turn we'll get to that in just a minute but anyway this match it felt like this was the perfect time to do it but again I couldn't tell you what I would have expected out of Jeff if he had won this was for the WWF undisputed title it was on a Monday Night Raw the fact that we weren't getting on a pay-per-view kind of showed me what probably was going to happen in the end <laughs> but yeah this is one of those magical moments where it's like Jeff had gotten some titles up until this point I believe the light heavyweights and the intercontinental I don't know if he ever got the European title um anyways he possibly could have when they were unifying all of them back on the day. But anyway, this was one of those, like, it felt like it was his time. But obviously, uh, a lot of things in Jeff Hardy's career would rid him of opportunities more than The Undertaker would. But Harry wanted to recreate this match here with Big Evil. I didn't even go for a special there, and it's a tombstone. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Get out of my yard, boy. Um, but I wanted to recreate this ladder match just because it's like, I feel like it's a definite one to highlight. I, I don't mean to be beating up on Jeff Hardy in all these matches, but, uh, uh, I, I, the Undertaker won this match, but it feels right to do it with the Undertaker. I'm going to talk about Jeff Hardy anyway. Uh, I've been mentioning a lot lately, you know, parallels. I've had substance abuse issues. He's had substance abuse. Is he's had substance abuse issues and I've messed that lineup no matter what. So I'm not harping on him in any way as far as like, oh, Jeff, you loser. Uh, but I recently found out, because I've been catching up on wrestling here. Uh, I fell out of watching it weekly in 2016, but uh, you know I've, I've gotten that itch. So I've, I've been watching pay-per-views from 2016 onward for the past month or two. And uh, I'm on 2020 now. <laughs> Watched every single one for WWE. And I didn't realize that uh, Sheamus and uh, old Jeff here had a program back in 2020 tackling a lot of that shit and capping it off with a, a bar match God, get him the ladder why don't you where is it um do we have to get it from the ring oh nope it's out there okay uh yeah and I didn't like the fact that Jeff didn't win at Backlash and then I found out that they had a bar match and I was like okay let's see where this goes uh and it was about what I expected I, I was wishing for a little bit more but that's them's the breaks oh elbow on that ladder match Slam him on it. Bam! Can I do anything in the corner here with this? I don't know if I can or not. I believe you can do it. Or is that later games? Nah, I can't do it like later games. Fuck. Oh, I was good enough. But yeah, like, let's let's fantasy book here. Jeffrey Hardy in his feud with uh, Sheamus here. Um, the biggest thing I had uh, as far as issues with that feud, why is Sheamus hating on fucking Jeff Hardy? Last ride coming, boy. I'm telling you. Oh, or not. Do I have a kick to the gut I can give him so I can get a fucking last ride in here, please? I don't understand what Seamus was like. He kept, he's just like, you're a junkie. And it's like, and? Like, why are you mad? I feel like the storyline should have started off with both of them are faces in a tag team match. And kind of like you did with uh, Matt Hardy and Edge, uh, that whole feud... You have a slip-up happen. Happen. <laughs> you have a slip-up happen. Okay, let's, let's wake his ass up. Uh, oh, okay. Um, 
Yeah, you have him in a tag team match, and you basically, you have Jeff botch something. And have it be kind of obvious, but not so. The only part that makes it obvious is Seamus' reaction. And then, don't mention it, but like the next week you have Seamus come out and like make an example out of Jeff in some weird like way that seems like, uh, try to make it seem like it's the result of a wrestler's court in a way. And if you don't know what that is, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm not going to go into it. Google it. Um, and then basically from there you can be like, Jeff, I don't appreciate the fact that all of us have to work in such a way and you don't. God, he's already dead. And you get him like kind of mad. Like, you're hurting my livelihood, Jeff. You're hurting you know, what I do to keep my family afloat. So that way you have at least a legitimate beef. Just having him call him a junkie and be like, just kind of pointing out flaws is not a good story make. At least, you know, the way I'm kind of booking it, you, you give him a reason to dislike Jeff's choices. Because if there's not a legitimate reason to dislike Jeff's choices, uh, no way. Not from right there. Um, oh, I can do a swanton off the ladder, though. Can I... God, how do you steal finishers here? I'm gonna figure that out in a second. Uh, I don't know. Anyways, but yeah, that's what I, you know, he's just kind of yelling at Jeff in this bar match, kind of like, oh, you're a junkie. Oh, you're, you can't handle this. You're not a real man. Like, it's just kind of like, what is your angle? Why should I care about this in any way? What do you care about enough to fight Jeff to make me think that Jeff is in trouble? You know what I mean? Like, it doesn't make any sense. I'll just sail off that way. Sail! Um, so at least if you're going to have him in a feud about this type of crap, Swanton from The Undertaker! Oh, big evil! Soaring through the air with the greatest of ease. Uh, you know, it just especially when it's something as sensitive as, you know, alcohol. If you're going to make Jeff a villain or, like, try to create a counterpoint against him, it has to be something like he's he's doing something dangerous in the ring and you're pointing it out, you know, it has to be something like that. It has to be, a, there has to be something negative that he's doing that you can point out that's not like attacking his family, you know, whatnot, which speaking of which, the bar brawl, Jeff just comes in and I'm, and I'm sitting on my couch. I'm like, if he just says something like, Seamus, I'm gonna be so pissed. It's so lazy. And what does he say? Like, yo, I'm here. And it's, yo, I'm here. Ah, again, the emotion's just not there. It's if you are going to talk about someone's issues on screen, at least do it in a passionate way that demonstrates... Oh God, I'm going to ride my motorcycle for a minute because it's just staring at me. Uh, fuck you, Jeff. I'm leaving. Can't you drive it? I thought you could drive it. No, nope, guess not. Fuck up Jeff on the outside. Um, break some announce tables. It's Yeah, it's just... It's like, let's just point out, you know, the guy's flaws. And especially when, you know, looking back on it, that feud... In hindsight, with, uh, you know, stuff that's happened in AEW with Jeff, the fact that he did relapse and get pulled over DUI after this whole match and, you know, bar fight and program with Sheamus, the fact that he, you know, it doesn't have a happy ending. Again, I feel like... Big move! <laughs> Jesus! Uh, I feel like... It's, it's, it's just... Without the emotion, there's nothing to overcome. If there's, if, if, you know, there's no point to prove other than just Jeff can fight still. It, there's no heart in it. There's no soul in it. And there's no reason to do it at that point. So, you know, if you're going to bring up something like this, at least make it worthwhile for the person who's participating, whose demons you are dragging through the fucking mud. Or don't do it at all, you know. And I, that's the problem. Like, I thought for a moment that they're actually going to have Jeff fucking lose it. And I was like, holy shit, they're not going to do that, are they? And sure enough, you know, he wins. But the whole face pain at the end of it, you know, kind of like, what the fuck is this? Ugh, like, I just, like, I don't, like, artistically, I get it if it's just something Jeff wanted to do. But, like, I don't, as a fan looking onward, I don't understand what, yeah, the paint, the, and the eyes and the blinking. I don't get that. Like, maybe it's a transformation for him, like, you know, recovery. Like, yeah, I get it, like. Trying to fucking get him up here. Come on. Oh. 
You know how chokeslam through it was. <laughs> Pump handle slam through it. Oh, nice. Boom, going through it. That's two. Have it be like, you know, he's a danger to the people in the ring and he has to prove a point. <sighs> and other things I would have done is like, have it be one-sided. Um, Sheamus is the bad guy here. He's dragging someone else's name through the mud. Uh, don't have... Can I go through the ring? Oh, big move. <laughs> oh, God. Jesus, what was that? Um, have Jeff Hardy. It's a one-sided affair. Be like Brock Lesnar versus Cena. You know, just one-sided affair. You know, Rikishi, Austin, one-sided affair. Just, you know, it's something that personal. It's a man's demons. You know, don't... Don't go lackadaisical about it. Go all out. You know, this is something huge. You can't just be lazy about it. I'm trying to figure out a way I can stun him and get him up. There we go. Big evil last ride here. Hopefully he'll send Jeff home. Um, but, yeah, I... It's You can't get entertained by, by that type of, you know, let's... Demons, haha! -ha. You know you have to handle it with the greatest of the greatest of these You have to handle it with kid gloves. You know you have to handle it with tact. You can't just. God, I'm trying to get this in place. It's a great match type, but you can't finagle this thing. It used to be a shadow too. <laughs> I wanted to climb at that time. Oh, Jeff, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do, Jeff? We're gonna boss and crab. That's what we're gonna do. But yeah, I would have had, you know, shame has just been completely destroyed. Maybe even had blood in there just because it's one of those situations where, fuck it, why not? God, stop pushing it over, you putts. Oh, twist of fate knocking on Jeff Hardy. Um, but yeah, have, have it be a complete blowout. And then, like, the only thing I said I would have changed was in the beginning where he's... God, bugger. Maybe it's like, oh, you have to do it with a circle, rather. Anyway, yeah, have him enter and have him say something to be like, you know, I'm okay with making my wife cry. I'm okay with her calling me on my shit, but I'm not going to deal with it here. And it's like, and then that's like kind of the opening to the match. This yard to one of the most <laughs> just angling on it. I don't know, but just, I feel like they deserve to give Jeff a little bit more respect. By the way, we're giving Undertaker all the respect here as he walks away with the undisputed title. Again, not meaning to harp on Jeff in any way. I really wish that uh, they would give a little more respect, but uh, this time again, it's just looking forward to the future for Jeffrey Hardy and seeing what comes next as the Undertaker walks away from Nam's apartment with another victory under his belt. We thank you for joining us, ladies and gentlemen. We will see you next time.